In today's tutorial, I'll be sharing how to create wet skin for your figures inside Dash Studio. I'll also be covering the four critical areas you need to consider before creating wet skin. And I'll also be sharing a few tips and tricks that are going to help you to create the most realistic skin for your figures inside Dash Studio. Hi, I'm Palmy. Welcome back to my channel where I help you to master Dash Studio. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any cool videos that are going to help you on your journey. Having said that, let's get back to the tutorial right now. Welcome to this tutorial regarding how to create wet skin inside Dash Studio. Now, there's a lot of ways to create wet skin in Dash Studio. I'm going to show you one way which has worked pretty good for me. As with Dash Studio, there are a number of ways to get to your own end goal. So pick the way that fits with you and just master it. That's all you got to do. So what I'm going to do as well in the link in the description, I'm going to give you two links. Uh, one is a website link, which is going to show you another way a Daz 3D artist creates his wet skin. And there's another tutorial that somebody else made, another Daz 3D artist who made a tutorial. Uh, you can use that as well. So um, the whole point of doing this tutorial is to give you a number of ways, pick one that you like or works best for you and master it. That's what you have to do. So having said that, let's get started with the tutorial. Let's create some really cool looking wet skin. So before we begin, I want to cover four critical areas that a lot of tutorials will talk about regarding wet skin. And I'm going to start with that right now. So number one critical area is the quality of the skin. So the free Genesis 8 characters or figures you get inside that studio, the skin on them is absolutely awful, absolutely horrible. And don't expect awesome great skin when you have uh, free figures. Don't expect that. So I highly recommend you go out and buy one. Uh, from the Dad's 3D store or Renderosity or wherever you want to buy one, that's fine. This one here, Michael 8, uh, has awesome skin as you can see. So it's going to look great, the wet skin. So highly recommend you go and do that. Uh, number two is the tone of the skin. So here we've got Michael 8 with a very light skin tone. And that will, uh, that will have to, that will depend on the settings I use. So depending on the skin tone, I will have to change the settings. So if I give you the settings here and you apply it to a darker skin tone, it ain't going to work. It ain't gonna work basically. You need to consider the skin tone. You'll have to change the settings appropriately. I will show you, I've got a lighter skin tone here, Michael 8, and I've got Denton as well, which I'm gonna show you later on in the tutorial, which has got darker skin, and you can see that how I have to change the settings to make it look um, to make it look at least half as decent as what it looked like on Michael 8. The third, the third critical component is lighting. Now, lighting is what can I say about lighting? It's the number one factor inside that studio. You could have the best skin like here, Michael 8, but if your lighting sucks, your render's gonna suck. Simple, it's simple. Uh, so I highly recommend you uh, practice lighting. I know it's difficult, I know it's hard. I find it still hard as well, but uh, with practice, you will progress. And when you progress, you will get better. So just practice with your lighting and you will see um, how great your renders will look. So lighting, very important indeed. And last but not least, IRA settings. So when I mean by IRA settings, I mean these skin shaded settings here. So these are the, these are IRA IRA settings. And what I mean by here is you don't want to go too crazy with the settings because if you go too crazy, your skin will start to look like plastic film, and that is not the way skin looks when it's wet. It doesn't look like plastic film. Uh, when I first started creating wet skin, uh, very very early on in the days, a uh, year and a bit ago. Um, it just used to be um, plastic skin and I thought plastic film and I, th and I thought it looked like wet skin, but no, nope, that's not the way it looks. So uh, just don't go too crazy with the settings, otherwise it'll look like plastic film. Having said that, let's get on with the tutorial right now. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to go over through my lighting. So I'm just basically using the default D dome environment as my lighting, nothing fancy, and uh, just a dome rotation facing the eyes. As you can see, the eyes here, um, the, the light's coming from here and it's pointing this way just to get even lighting. That's all it would be doing. So nothing fancy with the lighting so far. So let's uh, create this um, wet skin first. So the first thing we need to do is create the underlying uh, wet skin. So here you can see very, very, very faint. These are specular highlights here. These are specular highlights. So these is where the skin will start to get very shiny once we start to change some of these IRA settings. So the first thing I want to do is click on Michael 8, go to Surfaces tab. I've already done this. Oops, the Surfaces tab. Go to Editor and then click on Michael 8 and then Skin. Now Skin, when I click on Skin, it will highlight all the surfaces of the skin. Um, and it's highlighted them there for me. Great. So I'm going to go down to the settings that actually deal with the glossiness, the shininess of the skin. So the first one we have is Dual Low Specular Weight. And you'll find that a majority of the figures are starting to use this due low specular weight. This is like the better way of using uh, sh making shiny skin. 
So the first thing we want to do is we just really want to whack this up to number one. So we just want to whack that up to number one. That's all we want to do. Really easy, straightforward, nothing too difficult so far. We're not going to change any of these settings here because we don't need to. The next thing you'll find is the glossy laid weight. Now the glossy laid weight, some uh, figures that people that create them use glossy laid weight to enhance the glossiness of the skin. Uh, when I turn this on, you'll see what happens, although we're not going to use this. It makes the skin very, very wet, depending on how much weight you use. Um, I personally don't like to use it, so I'm going to leave that at zero because we're going to use something else instead. So what we're going to use is we're going to use top coat. And the reason why we're going to use top coat is because, explain this very quickly, is we have layers inside uh, iRay. So we have the first layer, which is the dew lobe specular weight which controls the glossiness. Then we have the actual glossy layered weight. So really bad handwriting, I apologize. And then we have metallic flakes, the metallicity, this here, metallic flakes. This creates a fake glossiness as well. And then on the top of all of that, we have top coat. So we have top coat, TC, I'll put for that. Top coat, as you can see, very clearly defined here, we're, de we're basically dealing with layers. So we have the base layer, then we have another layer, Maybe we have a metal, metallicity and then we have top coat. So this is why I like to use top coat. Let's get to the actual thing that's gonna, you know, give you the benefit straight away instead of using individual things where we're having too many settings. We don't need that many settings to create um, a wet skin. So we're just gonna deal with top coat and do a low speculative weight. That's all we're gonna deal with. And that's all you need really to create wet skin. So uh, let's go down to top coat. I'm gonna whack that up to one and just show you how it works. It works exactly the same way as glossy layered weight. Uh, but we can get some additional settings with this. So a starting value for this, as you can see, our skin is very, very wet, almost like there's a plastic film on it. And we don't really want that. That's far too wet, unless that's the look you're looking for. I highly recommend you don't go crazy and go one on this, it's too high. I will start off with a value of 0 0.3, a very uh, good value to start off with, 0 0.3, and then you can work your way from there. So as you can see here, it's gone, again, it's gone very dry now, the skin. And the reason why that is, is because of the top coat roughness is spreading the brightness of, sorry, not the brightness, the glossiness around the skin. So instead of being really glossy, it's made it rough, it's spreading it around the skin. So as we decrease this value, you'll see that the shininess, the glossiness comes back. So there we go, the glossiness is starting to come back. And a decent value for this is like 0 0.15 at the starting. That is fine. So essentially you don't need that much gloss for the underlying layer of the skin that we're doing here. This is perfectly adequate for wet skin. Um, the next setting now is reflectivity. Now, generally I will leave this at 0 0.5. The setting that the person created with the Michael Air decided 0 0.39 is a good setting. That's up to you. So basically what reflectivity does, it just boosts the shiny bits. So if you just have a look at the shiny sections here, as I increase the reflectivity, it will get very, very bright. There you go. So that's all it does. It just makes something that's very, something that's very shiny. It makes it even more brighter. So as you can see, we don't really want this very high. I will leave it at 0 0.5. That is a perfectly adequate setting for what we need it for. So that is really the basics of the settings. We haven't done much. We've changed maybe three or four settings. That's all we need to do for the base underlying layer. Great. Very easy. So how do we make this, uh, make it look more realistic? Well, what we need to do is add water droplets on the skin. And the way we could do that is add a geometry shell like we did in the bioluminescence uh, tutorial. So make sure Michael it is selected in your scene tab. It is here. We're going to click on create here. We're going to go to new geometry shell. Uh, I'm going to leave the label as Michael H shell. That's cool with me. If you want to change it, you could change it here. So I'm going to do accept. And then it's going to go all like, weird and white, that's fine, that's normal, nothing to freak out about there. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to go and select um, the surfaces here in the surfaces tab of the shell. And we need to change it to iRay shader because it's using the DAS, the DAS Studio default shader, which I think is 3D light for some reason. I don't know why it's using that. So let's go to presets, shaders, and let's get our lovely iRay Uber base. So when we go back to editor, you'll see it looks very familiar which is exactly what we want it to look like. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the iris shader, hey, we don't want you to uh, touch these surfaces, leave these surfaces as they are. So the surfaces I want to leave alone, I don't want to apply any settings to are the eyes. So the cornea, the eye moisture, the eye socket, 
fingernails, irises, uh, the mouth, the pupils, scale area, teeth, and toenails. And again, I'm going to go up here to the search section here. I can start searching for particular bits inside this uh, shader because there's a lot of settings in here. I've been a bit lazy. I'm just typing cut for cut out opacity. And I want to set this to zero because I don't want anything to affect those specific surfaces. And as you can see, because I've told you not to look at, I've told you to cut out the eyes, you can start seeing the actual eyes here. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is actually select the surfaces that we want to affect. So the ones we want to affect are the arms, oops, sorry, the arms, the ears, the face, the legs, the lips, and the torso. And I want that setting to be one, max out that setting. And I'm just going to get rid of this so we can see there are other settings. So I'll just delete that search there. So at the, the default setting for um, the geo shells, when you apply the iris shader is a glossy layered weight is 0 0.33. I don't like using glossy layered weight, so I'm gonna put that to zero. No, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna go down and we're gonna go to cut out opacity. Now this is where we're gonna choose our cut out opacity, our fake, um, our fake droplets, water droplets. So we're gonna go to browse here. And I've got some here, these textures, link will be in the description for these textures. Some of these are good and some of these are really bad because these are the ones that I started off with. So the best one that I found so far is actually number seven. So we're going to apply number seven here. Now, don't worry about this. This is just to, don't worry about this. If this is freaking out, this is absolutely normal because I missed that setting, which I'll go back to very shortly, which we're going to do right now, actually. So what we need to do is we need to make uh, this uh, geometry shell look like water. So how do we do that? Very easy. Refraction weight, set that to one. Okay. Refraction weight, set it to one. Refractive index, refraction index, set it to 1.33, which is the refractive index of water. As I said, you can go on Google, type in refractive refraction index, and it will give you a whole set of uh, refraction index values that you can put in here and really uh, play with. So 1.33 is water. Excellent. Okay. So what we need to do now is make it more glossy. So we've got very, very faint uh, water droplets here. I can't really see them as much. So again, we're going to use top coat weight. We're going to whack that up to one here and then you should start seeing them. So there we go. So at the moment, it looks kind of okay, not great. So we're going to change that right now as well. So we're going to go down in our top coat settings, top coat roughness. We're going to start off with a value of 0.3. So remember when we make things rougher, it spreads the um, shininess, the glossiness around. So it's going to make it more glossy. And the other thing we're going to use now is top coat layering mode. This is the first time you've probably seen this setting is we're going to change this to custom curve. Now, when we change the custom curve, we get these extra settings. You don't need to worry about these extra settings. Uh, we're not going to touch these. The only one I'm going to touch is this one here, top coat curve zero. And I'll show you what that does is when I increase it, you'll see that the water droplets start to change uh, in terms of the kind of color of it. Now we're not going to do a very high value for this. We're going to do a very, very low value. So something like 0.15. So as you can see, it doesn't look very good. The other thing we need to do as well is we need to change the tiling like we did in a bioluminescence uh, tutorial. Um, because at the moment the tiling is crazy. As you can see on the arms, the tiling is absolutely wrong. That's not the way water drips down our arm. If it's like this, it drips down like a, a vertical line. And at the moment it's horizontal. So you'll need to change that as well. So each individual surface, you'll need to go and change the tiles. So I'll do torso for now. And I'm gonna try and remember the settings. So vertical tiles, I think was two in this case. And I think the horizontal tiles was five. It might be less than that, it might be three actually. It might even be two. Okay, we'll go with two, two, and then we can sort it out later. So those are my tiles for my torso. And I'm gonna go back up and sort out the way this water looks now. I don't like the way it looks. So what I'm gonna do is increase the roughness. So let's try 0 0.5. Let's make that more rougher. How does that look? That doesn't look too bad. Let's go back to the tiles and increase the tiles. Let's try five again for the horizontal tiles. That's starting to look a bit better now. Let's try three. 
So you can see by playing with the tiles, we can change the way the water looks. So this actually doesn't look too bad. I like the way this looks. Uh, let's do a very quick render to see what it looks like. Now, because it's a, we're not using fancy lighting or anything, the rendering time will be very quick. It won't take that long. So I'll, I'll do it in real time and we'll see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good in terms of water as looking very wet. Um, the arms that he's doing and the face that he's doing because it looks absolutely horrible. Um, that's something you can do by yourselves. I'm not going to go through that in this tutorial. I don't want to, this tutorial to be too long. So I'm just going to cancel it here actually. That looks pretty good. So you can see it looks really good, the wetness here. For the torso it looks really good. Uh, we can further change that. So I can say, hey, top curve is a bit high. Maybe let's go 0.05. Let's try that. So as you can see now, it gets a bit, looks a bit more watery now. So let's do a render of that as well. Very quickly, real time render. Just wait for that to do. So that looks even more watery. That doesn't look too bad at all, actually. That looks pretty good. So let's just get it, let it get to about 80, 90%. Shouldn't take too long. And I'm gonna cancel it there. So let's have a look at that. As you can see, I've got a few here. So the one we did here with a bit more um, top coat curve on, and this one here, we've got less top coat curve on. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You can see the difference it makes. You've got these streaks of water coming down, so to speak. And here we've probably got too much going on, but you can see the difference with how changing one little setting makes. So you don't need to change a whole bunch of settings. You kind of set your main setting and then you kind of change the other settings a little bit and you get very, very different, uh, you know, unique renders. So let's minimize those. Um, one quick thing I just want to discuss for right now is let's do lighting very quickly. So I'm going to turn on my point lighting and you can see what the change it makes with the lighting. So I've added my point light on. My point light's in the corner here. I don't know if I'm going to show you this. Can I show you this? I can show you this. There is my point light. So there's my point light there in the corner. That's where the that's what it is just here at the front so let's go back to my camera and then let's do a very quick render of this and see how lighting affects the way it looks so i've got my dome lighting i've got my scene lighting which is my point light and as you can see it looks very very different if the skin looks very wet uh the the water droplets look very wet as well so you can see how critical lighting is uh, in terms of giving that very wet effect just by adding a point light one point light, nothing fancy, how, what a difference it makes. Uh, I'm going to cancel this now. And I'm going to show you what it looks like without, with just the scene only lighting. So that's the scene only lighting. We've got a light up here. Let's do a very quick render. Hopefully it won't take that long. Real time rendering. Let's make it bigger so you can see. So I just want to show you the difference lighting makes, and then we'll go to, um, how to do the, the wetness for the darker skin tone, just to show you. So you can see here the difference it makes, um, lighting coming from this angle on the right. You can see the wetness here, very, very uh, evident there, the wetness, just where the brightness is. So as you can see, lighting makes a crucial impact on how the wetness looks on the skin. So let's cancel that, minimize that. And let's just go to texture shading mode. So now I'm going to just go into Denton, uh, our darker skin tone character here, and show you how we do that there as well. Okay, so here we are with Denton with the exact same dome settings that we had before. I haven't changed anything. As you can see, the difference is crazy because it's got a darker skin tone. This one may need more lighting to take advantage of the, to really increase the wetness to make it look really good. So let's go to Denton here. Let's click on uh, the skirt surfaces. Uh, let's check out Denton surfaces. So what are the surfaces for the skin here? Let's have a look what the preset surfaces are. I haven't touched any of these. So these are the ones that come with the character. So again, we've got dual low specular weight. I'm just gonna whack that up to one again. As you can see, it's starting to get a bit more shiny now in those uh, areas there, more glossy. Let's go down. Uh, glossy layered weight is not being used, great. So let's go down and add our top coat. So top coat weight, uh, I believe was uh, I think we see it's, it's very, you see it's very plastic effect. I think the setting we started with 0 0.3. And our roughness setting that we decided on was 0 
and I didn't want the, the reflectivity. This is these settings you can play with reflectivity. If you want more on your uh, skin, you can do that. So you can you can whack it up if you want to. That's up to you. Personal taste. It's all personal taste, folks. Uh, so there we go. As you can see now, the skin is looking very wet on a darker skin tone. Uh, very different to the way it was looking at Michael H. Just because a darker skin tone looks excellent with wet skin. So this, this skin is probably a bit too wet, so I would probably add the roughness a bit more. So 0 0.3 roughness, there we go. Just to counteract it. So that that's pretty good. I like the way that skin looks in terms of wetness. If I'm being picky, I'll probably go to 0 0.2. If I'm being a bit picky, uh, we'll stick with 0 0.2. So you can pair around with that setting. Again, we're gonna add the geometry shell, so we'll do that right now. So with my character selected, then turn, Create new geometry shell. I'm gonna just do accept. Again, it's gonna go all white. I'm just gonna do these settings very quickly now. Because I don't wanna waste your time with these settings because we all know what to do by now. So I'm just gonna just get rid of these settings very quickly. Uh, fingernails, iris, uh, mouth, pupils, scleria, teeth, toenails. Cut out zero. Arms, ears, face, legs, lips, and torso, full. And while we've got the cutout open here, what I'm gonna do is click on this map button, the map button, click browse, add our map. Okay, just get rid of that. Uh, glossy layer weight, I want zero. And refraction again, I want one. Refraction weight, one please. And refraction index, 1.33. Cool, okay. And we need to add our top coat now. So a top coat one, max out the top coat. As you can see, it gets very, uh, very wet indeed. Uh, again, we're gonna use uh, top coat roughness. We're gonna start off with a value of 0 0.3 and top coat layering mode, we're gonna use the same value. So custom curve, and I believe the initial value for top coat curve zero was 0 0.15, as our initial value. So you can see how different it looks um, with a dark skin tone. These settings, the original settings that we did for Michael 8 look very different to a dark skin tone. So again, you're gonna to have to play with this. Again, I would decrease this to 0 0.05 even, and I would increase the top coat roughness to something like 0 0.5 to get the wet look. One other thing that I think we didn't do was add a top coat bump, so we could increase the the realism, so to speak, because water does have a little bit of bump. It's not all, it's not super flat. So we could add a bump here. So I'll click here, go to browse, and we can add our normal map here. And then I just need to change the top code bump mode to normal map here, just to let it know that we're using a normal map. And now you can see more of it here. Again, we haven't done the cutout, uh, sorry, the tiles. So I'm gonna do the tiles now. So maybe two for that and maybe vertical tiles, we can have five this time and see what that looks like. Uh, maybe that's too much, three. Okay, cool. So at the moment, it doesn't look really good at all, the wet skin, uh, the droplets, the water droplets do not look very good at all. So what I would do now is, I would probably decrease, the, decrease that quite a bit, actually. Let's go to 0 0.15. Let's make it more shiny. Right, let's see what that looks like. Let's do a render. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it really depends on the skin tone and the lighting. So I'm just gonna change the lighting in a very quickly in a bit. I just wanna show you what this looks like because the rendering doesn't take that long. So remember we only we changed the we changed everything on this one, the torso. Here's the it's just doing the actual calculations, the wet skin. So let's get let's let it get to about 90% see what it looks like. So this actually doesn't look too bad. It's probably doesn't look too good here at the moment because still doing the rendering. And we added the normal map here. We didn't add the normal map for Michael 8. So I highly recommend you add a normal map uh, just to give it that realism because there is some depth to water, even though it's not totally flat. Water droplets do have depth. So there we go. So this actually doesn't look too bad with these settings. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna cancel that right now. I'll leave that as it is. Uh, let's go and change the lighting. So I'm gonna add my uh, point light here and see what that looks like. What difference does that make? So remember my point lights here in the corner here and it's just 
the lights is coming like this, this uniform lighting because the point lights are going to go in every direction in the equal distance. So let's go to my camera. And as you can see, we've added that light and the skin looks very, very glossy now, very shiny, very wet because we added that light. Let's do a very quick render of that. So just give it a second to kick in. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. All right. Uh, let me just see what settings are at 57%. All right, let's let it get to about 90 something percent. So you can see the difference lighting makes uh, as well as on darker skin tone. Uh, when you use a HDR as well, HDRI map, another one, uh, it really does affect the way the water droplets look. Again, make sure you do tiling, individual tiling for the face, for the arms, for the torso and for the legs as well. Although we can't see his legs here, uh, make sure you do the, the individual uh, tiling for that as well. So it looks more realistic. As you can see, the arms need work because that is not the way water looks like on arms. So this looks highly realistic. It looks pretty good. I like the way this looks actually. It's really nice. So I'm going to cancel that. Uh, last one that we're going to do now is we're going to just do scene only and see how that looks. So let's do a quick render of that. So I just want to show you the, the lighting with a dome, with the dome and the scene lighting and with the scene lighting by itself, i.e. the point light by itself. Just to show you the difference it makes uh, lighting. Uh, just, just to show you that even though we may have really good settings here, once you apply the lighting, you may have to change these settings here to accommodate the lighting you're using. So it's taking a while here just to do it. It takes a while to do rendering with point lights because you can imagine the light is bouncing off the skin here and it's going off in crazy directions and the point lights going in every direction. So it needs to do more calculations. If you're using a spotlight, spotlight is very focused lighting in one direction, and that's gonna um, that's gonna be slightly quicker to render. So here, I would actually play around with the tiling. I don't like the way the tiling is here. It looks like it's kind of like frost, frost, frozen skin going on here, frozen droplets or something. Uh, it just may it just may need more time to render, uh, but that's something I would adjust because I don't like the way that looks at the moment. I hope this tutorial has helped you and given you a few pointers to consider when you're creating your wet skin for your figures inside that studio. Don't forget the four critical elements as well. The actual skin tone, so the lightness and the darkness of the actual skin tone. The quality of the maps of the skin tone. The lighting as well, don't forget that, my personal favourite. And number four, the actual iris setting. So once you consider those four things, you can start to create your awesome wet skin for your figures. Now, if you stay to the end of the video, thank you very much. It means a lot to me. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to leave a comment down below as well. And for this week's comment of the week, it is from Toby Yoda. So I'll leave it up here. Toby Yoda, if that is your real name, that is so cool. Uh, I don't know if it's your real name, but that's so cool. So I'll leave a comment up here. Thank you very much for your comments. And if you want to be featured in next week's video, make sure to leave a comment down below as well. I'll be picking them every week. And having said that, I'll see you in next week's video.